सेकंड Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, looking at verses 35 to 49. I told the folks gathered at Judy Ohl's funeral Thursday how interesting it was how we were here celebrating the resurrection of Christ through the implications. And had Judy's health continued, she would have been here. One of those members that you could count on her here for Bible study. Here for morning work, our evening, here for Wednesday prayer. If we had this Saturday discipleship here, we loved to be with the people of God. We recognized that the task was of all the things Jesus had commanded her. She did that, and I even told them that once she was not able to attend anymore, I contacted the office and said, it's possible for me to get a Sunday school. A student, disciple, follower. Simpler church member. Like that, you can get large help. Her life may First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses thirty five to forty. Stand with me if you will. We have we have moved beyond the early discussion. idea that though the people had had agreed they believed Jesus Christ had risen from the dead they did not think that they themselves would rise from the dead and didn't see the value of it because of the secular and Gnostic philosophy that had invaded their lives the body was able to be released from the body good thing the spirit was good particularly made good in encountering Christ savingly, so why would they want to be reunited with the body? That was the mentality that they said. So Paul has been dealing with this, arguing for not only Christ's resurrection, the resurrection of believers. He begins to move now into the discussion of what, what, what about this resurrection body? He's trying to change their mind. How they think about the body. Studying that. First Corinthians 15, verses 35. Follow along as it. But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? What kind of body do they come? You foolish person. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, Star differs from star in glory. So is it with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a life-giving. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image. What have we read together? Errant, infallible, all sufficient. May the Lord help us. I don't. I don't suppose there are any doubters about the possibility of resurrection. We need to be strengthened in our conviction about. This. But I promise you, 
You are surrounded by people every day who think that you and I and they are just so much food for worms. Nah, that's Hope to those born those they die. Thank you. Now, as I said, Paul first of all dealt with the denial of a general resurrection because of their background. So now he has kind of a continuation. How can this be possible? If we grant Paul there is a resurrection, how's that possible? It doesn't make common sense. Reason from nature. from description of our resurrection bodies. Contrast between the earth and the example from the resurrection. Do that by leading into these questions that he answered. If you're familiar with Paul's writings at all, you know that in Romans, and Romans is a fine example, he anticipates the arguments placed before. In Romans, particularly because he had had those arguments himself. Wrestled all the things that he got wrong. It's clear to him that Jesus Christ, whom he was handed over to the Romans to be crucified. Uh, here he anticipates the questions based upon culture, your surroundings. So he asks in verse 35, someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? And it's those two questions that, that form context of the answers he's arguing through uh, verses 36 39. They believe the resurrection of the body was indesirable, undesirable, which is interesting in the Ending that, their belief that Well, the question would be, how could this? One writer suggested, and maybe John McCarthy suggested, part of the problem was that some Greeks may have picked up an argument by some of the rabbi time about resurrection. Job nineteen twenty six says, "Yet from my flesh I shall see." Some of these rabbis concluded that the that the bodies will be identical. Earthly bodies in every way, resurrection bodies. Here we went testamental Sunday night. Apocryphal book of bodies. Writer said, Earth shall end at the resurrection or the death. Shall make no change in as it has received, so, so Gnostic got hold of this. Use this as their argument against the idea of But when you think about it, why would anyone who believes Gnostics believe, why would anyone who believes that God is the sovereign creator of heaven and earth, all that is, now that would be difficult. Section of a portion. Paul says of basically that in Acts 6 8, when he's standing before King Agrippa, why is it considered incredible among you if God does raise the dead? Why? Talking about the. So. From these questions, 
It's, it's look at the book. Four headings. First of all, this illustration from nature, he says, 36 to 38, you foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. What you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. If uh, you were a grower, you grew or even wheat. Decided we're going to fix corn. Sat down at the table and there was a bowl, kernels of corn. You wouldn't think that edible. In fact, it would not be edible. It would be a miserable experience to try to eat. Even more miserable to actually accomplish it. Got to germinate. Die. Jesus was mentioning that when we read out of John a while ago. Left a grain of wheat fall to the ground. I cannot talk about him. His ministry designed by God would not be less planted. So Paul is arguing something like this. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. Death of the sin. Dies and the sprout begins to come up through the ground, then we life has taken the place. It's also not the body that is to be. It's not the form. The form of the seed is not what you will ultimately bear kernel. Interesting to me. World of food. A God created thing. That an apple told not to see seeds toxic toxin in My mother used to tell me, said if you seed apples, then plants will begin to grow out of my ear. Thought I would tell me apple seeds are poisonous. You can take those seeds, plant them in the ground. When an apple tree springs up, it's going to bear fruit, not poison, but has seeds and seeds. Creative. And so perhaps of wheat or some, but God gives it a body as he has chosen to each kind of seed body. Ooh. Planted tomato seed, planted watermelon seed. And, and an orange tree began. Wouldn't think that's an interesting. Particularly if you bought the seed, say somebody put me on. Kind of seed. All the genetically modified stuff going original, predictable. So Paul's just addressing the skepticism, and he challenges their skepticism at the beginning by saying, You foolish. We're looking on uh, Wednesday nights. Proverbs finds wisdom for us, tells us about wisdom that we can well educated fools, that a fool uh, one who does not fear God falls upon. Challenging the Corinthians that in the face of their claim that they believe in God's Son Jesus Christ, he's basically saying you do. Fear God. Dissolution and dying is I so does not 
fight for you. Twelve twenty four, which we read. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it as it bears much fruit. And Jesus talking about his necessary that he die, dies again. Doing that, he would conquer sin, death, hell, the grave. He would lead captivity captive. He would lead me only. And only if he died by God's prescription, he was the sin bearer. I had a professor in ministry. Work. Professor, who said, what if, what if Jesus had just died in his? He'll be our Savior in his position. Thanks to the mentoring of Professor, who pays? Jesus dies in his who? Didn't like the answer, but Paul is talking about solution, difference, difference between God. God gives it a. God's the one who determined. Plant. He's totally in charge of planting, sowing, reaping. Or we win. Logical. Up around that all. Necessity gives it a body. So the second thing he begins to address then is this description of our resurrection bodies. Look at verses 39. For not all flesh. But there's one kind for human, another for animal, another for birds. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is of one kind and the glory of the earthly is of another. There's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. Star differs from star. So it is. Our resurrection bodies, Paul says, will be different from our earthly. Certainly we shouldn't question God's ability. Paul talks about how all flesh is not the same flesh. Think about that for a minute. All the different creatures. Even though every son of Adam and every daughter of Eve made in the image of the soul that we how distinct we are. No two sets of entire world. Not even identical. God's unique creative power said this. I've read that there are this just reading this blows my mind. Ask me to explain it to you. I've read that there are some six hundred octodecillion different combinations of octodecillion ten to the one hundred and eighth power or one followed by a hundred and eight.
600 times 1, 180. Each plant type of plant has a distinct pattern. Plant, animal, human being has it. Grouping of flowers. Seeds, no two blades of grass, no two human beings exactly alike. One is completely identical. Maybe These, these realities make some of the argument against specific argument against no matter what we may faith this morning, no matter how specialized or unbalanced our diet may be, no matter what our environment we will never change. It doesn't take, quote, billions. We never will. Healthier, thicker, get heavier, lighter. That's several times a month. We will never be anything but a human being and never any other human being except the one. This insanity we're living in in our culture. With the LGBTQ plus, whatever the next letter is going to be added to it, pushing its agenda to now destroy any notion of identifiable pronoun. We're living in times of mildest days of Sodom and Gomorrah, raunchiest days of so when you hear people talking like Ridiculous. They are the textbook. They're denying. Our mental. Absolutely. Biological codes in us exception. Think someone coded logical code DNA representing Science cannot Paul now talks about these heavenly bodies differ greatly from earthly bodies nature. 
manifestation. Not only are they vastly different, these heavenly bodies vastly different from earthly bodies, they are different from one another. Son, very different. Both the sun and the moon are different from the star. From the study of astronomy, we know that many of what we normally are called stars are actually planets. Therefore, similar to the earth and the moon, the true stars are themselves a type of sun. Paul wasn't looking through a telescope when he was writing this. It didn't have to be. He was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit who put it all there to be. Stars generate their own light. Planets and moons only reflect light produced by the sun. So they're very different. Do more than casually. Stars have their own colors. Again, this just children's key. decades. A fellow there who was nowhere else brought this telescope. Got out clear evening. Fixed his telescope. Go up there and tell me what you said. Thousand. Then he began to train the telescope on visible, visible stars, stars that we would recognize by name. The naked eye, they look right. Paul says, just as plant animal king, different plants terminate. By the way, it was Thomas. Just as the heavenly body. Different. Earthly bodies different from heavenly bodies different from. The point here is he wouldn't have used this term, but you can't come up with a cookie cutter approach when discussing something. You can come up predictable. God created us. Everything. Years ago, when I was arguing, Ellie a lot. Ellie asked me. Argue for the reality of the story in atheist. 
see as to God walking along, coming upon an object, a shiny object in the sand. Atheus reaches down and picks it up. What you and I would recognize as a pocket watch. Atheus says, isn't it amazing that from one grain of sand, Billions or billions of see I said, let me see that. Back off. Not. This is a designer. world you and I live in as a designer. It takes being willing to be completely Moses and Elijah appeared on They were as distinctly individual They'd been while on the earth. In fact, apostles recognized. Twenty-two, thirty-two. So I'm the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead. See, in other words, fit into what Paul is saying here. If they're if there is no resurrection, God ceases to be God. Those who God of the living are on this earth, God of those who who live either in heaven with Him or apart from Him. Hell is not just being separated. Hell is being separated from God, living for all of eternity, beholding. You don't get to escape him. He's not there in heaven. He is looming over it. And who died. Looked up. I was out to Father Abraham, Lazarus, the beggar. He'd ignored all of his life, resting in pose. Father Abraham, Paul doesn't come. eternally, no hope, no opportunity. Ever cross over. So God is the God of the living. It, it, it begs for resurrection. You're around, I don't know if you know the term, you're around nihilists all the time. They, they just believe that live, die, you're around them all. Neighborhood, perhaps in your get the word to them. Life, the very nature of creative activity cries out and Lord willing, when Sunday. Critical, long time. Most important. Just that point oh two. Children of professional athletes. Look at all the time. Hundred children in the 
Only way to it. The only way to have a real hope of heaven. A lot of people have a hope. A lot of preachers act like all a person's got to do is die. Doesn't matter how. Way to have a real hope. living. Find best him. Live for him. Live in the Lord. Holy Father, we bow before you. Father, we believe. Some point, head level. Doesn't, not anybody that doesn't believe. Us. Dear God, fictional. Look, people when we encounter them in the marketplace and looking upon people who are headed somewhere. Lord, if the, if the Gnostic philosophies of Corinth had a bad effect, Lord, what must have been there? Believe in the resurrection. Live those who come from the empty tomb, demonstrating in our lives that the resurrected king is resurrecting Pray for our children and our grandchildren and our friends and our neighbors and our loved ones who are part of Christ. That before they perish, before they leave this earth, they will come to know Christ. He will be the one who has led the way. He will con have conquered sin and death and hell. Pray for them and led the way out of them through that and us. Stand with me and